Hi everyone, um, I'm really happy to be there and uh, I'll talk about permission management. Um, so why do we talk about permission management? Everyone knows uh, who should have access to something and then you give them access and then it works. But it's not the way it is. Uh, a small, uh, just a small talk about who am I and um, where I work. So I'm working at Theatre Group. It's uh, a group in, in France and in other countries. We um, are developers working to uh, build good products, I hope so, um, and uh, secure products for uh, multiple clients, uh, especially in France. Um, so let's talk about permission management. So I'm sure uh, many of you have already seen this picture. It's a broken access control. Um, and uh, you can see people going around the fence. But uh, the fact that I want to talk about in, uh, in this image is that even users who had access and who had the card to go through the fence were going around the fence. If you build something and it's easier for your users to not use your access control, then they won't use it even if they have access to it. Um, and this is uh, one of the reasons why uh, the broken access control is now the first uh, flow on the OS top 10, because uh, even you, your users won't help you uh, be compliant, be more secure uh, in their app. Um, just a small example, uh, just examples about broken access control. So in uh, 2019, it's not a long time ago, the French welfare uh, website was uh, was just uh, vulnerable because of broken access control. Uh, users were able to get prescription from other uh, users just by changing the ID uh, in the URL. So really sensible informations, uh, and not that long time ago. And I know for sure uh, about some of our clients that had those broken access control in less than uh, a few months, a few years. So it's really something that is uh, well known and that is common, unfortunately. Uh, also another example, um, a white hat found uh, a few years ago that with just a simple post re re request, you could become uh, admin uh, of Facebook pages. So, yeah, even the biggest companies have some broken access control. Um, so now let's talk about uh, my project, what happened in my project, and some of the issues uh, we had. Some context about it. So my client was uh, an investment fund company with collaborators all over the world. Uh, those collaborators were working in, in different companies. They, had, uh, they were launching funds. Um, it was really sensible with uh, sensitive data and sensitive pe people, uh, with uh, really wealthy people. And uh, those wealthy people had lots of money, so they would attract bad people. Uh, and uh, we had really, uh, we, we had to uh, concentrate on uh, the, the access control. Um, our problem is the access control is really complicated. We have uh, people from our clients, so they are like the super users, they are the, the one giving the rights. But then in each uh, company uh, managing the founds, we have the supervisors, they are the one able to publish the documents, for example, because of legal constraints. But we also have back office users, um, and they are the one managing the app uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. They are the one creating the documents, uh, managing the users, getting most of the job done. Um, and uh, let's talk about theory first. So we have two kinds of access control. First, the horizontal access control. We don't want people from uh, the company A to access um, the documents or the data from uh, the company B. And vertical access control. In my specific case, I don't want uh, people 
like back office users being able to um, delete documents or publish documents because only certified people can do this. So this is uh, the vertical access control. We don't want to have more privilege. Um, at that time, our ar architecture was really simple. So we decided to uh, manage uh, the permissions in Django uh, internally because in Django you already have uh, some, um, some management tools. And I'll talk about it. So first, let's add our super user. The super user is uh, given by Django. Oh, it's really simple. Let's add a super user. I just need to uh, tick this box and then I have a super user. But then my super user is able to, to do everything. They can create users. They can uh, change the resources. It's basically as if you were given uh, a user access to your prod your prod database, like they could do everything. If I create a new model, then they have access to it. And uh, it led to uh, many issues. So we didn't have uh, the least privilege principle. So no guardrail against uh, human error. We were called by a super user who had deleted uh, resources they shouldn't uh, have access to, for example, or like they shouldn't change because they weren't owner of the, res the resource. And um, in case of an attack, a hacker would have access to everything. So maybe that's okay if you have like one super user. But just like we talked at the beginning, if it's easier, your user you will do it. And then in just a few weeks, we had 35 super users. Because uh, our clients, they didn't want to really uh, think about what super users you should have access to. Maybe... Um, just the, the user part, maybe just the document part. And, uh, with like everyone is, when everyone is responsible for something, then no one is. And so it was just all badly configured. Um, so we decided to change it. Uh, and we didn't have a super user anymore, but just an account for uh, an admin to give, uh, permissions and to create users. So no more uh, open permissions, but just the, the one needed for those super users. Um, now let's talk about the user's permissions. In Django, by default, and in many other languages, you have uh, four created permissions. It's the same as on the APIs. You have the CRUD. So you can uh, add your document, you can view your document, you can delete it, and you can change it. Um, so we had those permissions, but we also needed uh, another permission for our case, our business case. We needed uh, the published permission because uh, first our back office users were creating the documents, but then the supervisor was uh, were going through it and publishing it. Um, and to make it easier to manage, we create group to uh, manage those permissions. So, for example, an admin has access to the view and the add, like a back office user, and uh, the supervisor had the, the publish uh, part. Then we need to manage uh, the, the resources, who has access to which resource. Uh, to do that, on each document, we had the company linked to that document. And uh, it, so it was named authorization group in our case. And users had this authorization group. They had to had it to be able to see it uh, and to manage it. Um, so this is uh, the discretionary access control. You have the honor giving the right rights from resource uh, for the users on a resource. Uh, so it was really great for developers. Uh, we had all these permissions. We could manage them uh, in our app, but as you can see, it's not that easy to read. Uh, or, uh, like, or I mean, uh, with who were given the rights, they were so lost in it. We had so many permissions. And it led to uh, many bugs. So, for example, one of our users had access to uh, the add permission, so they could uh, create documents, but then they didn't have the view permission, so they couldn't see it. Just imagine 
how it is. You just create your document and then it's, is, it isn't there. So you create more and more, uh, and you can't see it. So yeah, for, uh, the one, uh, the ones giving the rights, it wasn't, uh, just obvious that if you have the ad permission, you don't have the view permission. Um, so that, like, many, uh, many people were reporting bugs. Uh, most of the time, those bugs were just permission issues. And, uh, we as, as developers were, uh, working on it. And sometimes we would lose, like, two or three days just, uh, thinking about the wrong permissions. Or like, if, if there was a bug in the app or if it was a wrong permission. So losing some time. Um, and one of the issue was the, in Django, uh, the super user or like the admin, the new admin, uh, couldn't delegate the group creation to supervisor. So in our, uh, supervisor team, those people, they, the supervisor knew if someone was joining the team, or if, if someone was leaving, uh, who should have access to which resources, but, or, uh, admin didn't know that. So we had to, uh, create, like, to change this, uh, this model. Um, and also, oh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> and also, uh, at that time, uh, we, uh, we were onboarding, uh, more and more users, and we didn't have in the app, uh, the security, the basic security features, like multi-factor authentication, uh, password management, the lo security logs. Um, we also wanted to, um, like block a user if there were many attempts on, uh, on their account. So, uh, to add both of that, we had, uh, two choices at that point. We could have, developed it in our app, or we could use a SaaS. Um, at that time, we, all, we also had uh, an, evil, uh, like an evolution in, in, our, uh, in our environment, and other apps were uh, created, and they also wanted to have the same management system. So it was uh, another, another uh, great argument to uh, use a SaaS, and uh, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. So then how do we choose SaaS? Um, we decided on key points, like control points, we wanted to check to have the best SaaS possible for our app. So first we wanted it to be secure, uh, have all the security features needed in our app. Uh, and because it was causing bug, we wanted it to be user friendly. Like the supervisors could, uh, could manage their team and they could, uh, create like the right, the right permissions for their team. Um, and then two other, like small part, but still really, uh, needed, uh, features. It, it needed to be fast and scalable and obviously to make or job easier, it needed to be, to be uh, easily integrated in our app. So we had already implemented the permissions in Django, but it wasn't uh, great for or need anymore. Um, so it wasn't secure because we didn't have the, the right features and it wasn't admin friendly. Our client was using uh, Azure Active Directory at the time, so we thought about choosing it. But because there were many um, external users, it wasn't uh, the best way to uh, to do it. In fact, if you read the Azure AD uh, definition, it enables your employees to access uh, external resources, especially Microsoft ones. So it's not you don't want to add external people, not from your company, in your AD. Um, we also could use the client CRM, but it wasn't really fast and scalable. Sometimes it would like respond in a few seconds, like like three to ten seconds. Ten is not just three is not acceptable, but ten is just the worst. Um, it wasn't developer friendly. There didn't have any documentation about it. And it wasn't admin friendly for, uh, the external admins because 
they uh, couldn't really use it. They didn't know how to use it. Um, so we decided to implement uh, permissions on, not directly in Django, that's not that, but in a SAS, in an external SAS. And we decided to use Okta. So no, I'll talk about why we used Okta and uh, what challenges we faced uh, using it. So first, uh, this is what it looks like. We decided to create uh, a group system. Uh, so we had like the admin and the firm and a supervisor uh, group. And uh, we implemented that kind of workflow. So for example, so I create a group in my app and I create all the groups and the users in my SaaS, so here in Okta. And I can give those groups to my users according to what their role is. Uh, and when they log in in my app with uh, the Okta SSO, then we can create or update those users and give them the rights uh, they need. So this is the role-based access control. Uh, we, uh, as developers, we created those roles uh, and give it, and we gave them uh, the right permissions. So what was great about Okta and what wasn't uh, that great? So first, it was easy to uh, manage password policies and uh, it was uh, really easy to integrate it with our flow. So for uh, the password policy, we had specific policies on sensible groups. For example, the supervisors, there was the one with most uh, rights. So we could um, like change their password policies, for example, or we could rotate them uh, if needed. Um, there was also um, something that happened and uh, Okta was hacked in 2020. It was just a few months after we had implemented it. Um, they, so they helped us, but they took some time to tell the customers. So it took two months before uh, they told the customers. So they were really, uh, like people pointed fingers at them uh, because of it. Um, but after it, they helped us. They uh, gave, gave us uh, great documentation about what to do, like which part of the application could have uh, been reached. So I don't know, it's mixed feelings about it. Um, and for uh, the, the administrators, it was uh, user friendly. They had just one place to use all, one, one place with all the rights. Uh, and, uh, and the, like the, the UX is better. So I don't know if you've worked with many uh, management tools, but like, security management tools, but most of the time it's really ugly and no one is working on uh, making them UX, like making the UX better, making them user friendly. So like, for example, Cognito uh, in AWS, it's yeah really ugly. You can see that it's built by tech people, but they don't uh, think about the non-tech people. Um, and we had also, I don't know if you've noticed in my uh, schema, but like we uh, needed developers to build, or like to create groups in our app. Uh, we didn't want users to be able to create groups in Okta and then like link them to our app directly. Um, so it meant we had a duplication uh, between our group in Okta and our uh, group in the app, but it was to make it more secure to be sure uh, the rights were the ones uh, needed for the group. And it led us to uh, this. So all our permissions, uh, like about the documents, were just created in two permissions, like the can create draft documents that was for the back office users and can publish and delete documents. This is for like the supervisors. Um, then it was fast and scalable. Uh, we had, like they have many offers. I don't know if you can take them, but you can also use another SaaS. I don't have any parts in Okta, so just check what is better for, for you. 
Um, and for developers, they have a really uh, clear developer documentation. Um, you can also manage your your users or your resources and add uh, properties that you want to use. Um, those properties cannot be read only if you want your users to uh, manage uh, their their own users. So this is one of the the issue we had. Um, and obviously, so the, the developers, because of the duplication uh, in groups, they had to uh, they had to add also the groups each time a new company was involved in, for example. Um, but after it, our administrators were really happy about it, especially the supervisors. They were able to uh, manage their team and uh, the admin and our clients because they could delegate uh, and they didn't have uh, like endless conversations about which didn't have the right rights. Uh, and the developers, they had less bugs uh, because of permissions. Um, so like a small recap about the control points for our management service. So um, we decided to use Okta because it was more secure with the security features uh, implemented in it. It was fast and scalable. It was developer friendly and it met our uh, admin um, needs. So um, one of, uh, so like the, I think I want to talk about like the takeaways about this talk. So first, you really need to understand your business. Uh, we had many discussions because of the bugs. So it, it was bad to have all those bugs, but they helped us understand what was needed uh, for our admins. And even after we implemented those groups, we still uh, had to evolve with the business. It's always a trade-off between your granularity and your simplicity. Uh, we built an app with like thousands of rights and uh, we decided to keep only two permissions for the admins. Um, but that was the ones needed for them to work. And uh, design a system that prevent users error. So help them, um, like in our case, it was, they only had those two permissions and they uh, had, they didn't have to understand everything that was behind it because it wasn't what was needed in the job. Um, to go further, because there were still limits in uh, our system, it was still possible for uh, users to give the wrong permissions. For example, a supervisor could give too much permission to a back office user. Uh, we had hundreds of users, so it wasn't really easy to go through uh, all of them and check their permissions. And uh, because we there were multiple apps in our system, uh, those permissions evolved. Some permissions were uh, only for some apps. So uh, what I'm working on now is to add uh, a visual management to detect uh, those errors. Um, help those business stakeholders see what uh, permissions are given to users and uh, a really easy way to track those errors. You need something to show your stakeholders um, what are the permissions and they can't have it really easily. If they can't have it really, really easily in your app, then uh, they won't take the time to review all uh, the users. So always um, check with them. Um, thank you. That was uh, about what happened in my app. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any question you have. And if you need resources, I'll also give my slides. I think there is a question some over there. Wait, wait. Just getting it. <laughs> Thank you for your feedback. Uh, before testing SaaS solution, do you use open source solution like Keyclock? No. Um, so we didn't because our client was really 
like they didn't really want it, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, because they wanted, um, like for them, one of the, the important parts was, was also uh, the support, like if they could have access to uh, a great support, especially after we left them, um, because open source is really great uh, for developers, but for business people, it's not that easy to use. So we didn't uh, include it. Any more? Yeah. So you said that you had lots of permissions uh, from all of your Django models. Um, how did you end up mapping those to the Octa roles? Um, so it was really uh, like many conversations with uh, the business, understanding what they needed to do. Uh, and like later in, in the app, we also added new uh, groups. So that, that was really at the beginning, but like we needed to understand what was the role of uh, each person in, in the business. And uh, yeah, it took some time to understand that. I don't know if that answer it or... <laughs> Maybe as a follow-up question, uh, do you intend to do a visual uh, analysis thing for for that mapping as well? For for what? Sorry. For, for mapping the uh, model permissions to the roles. Yeah, I I think it could be great, like for the developers of the tech parts, to really understand what is uh, in each group its role, and uh, then review it with the management if needed. How do you actually engage these uh, business stakeholders for this uh, permission management? Um, so a great part was because we had uh, many bugs, they were involved because they they knew uh, it didn't work the right way. Uh, so sometimes the bugs are a clear red flag for your clients, for, for your business, uh, to show that there is something wrong with the tech but maybe it's because the tech part and the business part don't talk uh, at all or don't talk enough. And uh, showing them the bugs and how we resolved it uh, through adding the right permissions helped us uh, involve them in, in our uh, management system. Any more questions? If I add more to that, I mean, uh, are they uh, are these engagement uh, kind of a both way uh, contributing or it is one way contributing? Uh, business stakeholders were they contributing? Yeah. Or, like, yeah, I I think uh, they were also really happy to see what was like behind it, how to help uh, the tech people, and uh, like. Most of the time, your business, they, it seems really, uh, like obscure what happens in, in the tech parts. But when you explain it really clearly, they're really happy to know what happens and they're really happy to help you with it. So you can, like, include them more in the tech part. Do we have any more questions? So great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marie, for this engaging talk. <laughs> and, uh, and let's go to lunch. <laughs> and uh, one round Thank of you very much. Yeah.